Hello students, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from University of Delhi and in this session we will discuss locomotion and movement. We all are familiar with movement and also with locomotion, but what is the relation between these two and how different animals move in a different way. Before we come down to locomotion in human beings, let us see the evolutionary path for locomotion. Starting with amoeba, unicellular organism. It moves and it moves with the help of pseudopodia which it produces in the direction in which it wants to move. That means locomotory organ in amoeba will be pseudopodia. If we try to observe paramecium, it is lined by cilia. These cilia are the mode for locomotion in this organism. We know that paramecium is also unicellular organism and it moves and it moves very fast with the help of cilia. Coming to euglena which is another single celled organism, it has a long flagella, whip like flagella which helps in locomotion. So these three belong to unicellular organisms. Now let us come to multicellular. For example, Hydra. Hydra has multicellular body with many tentacles. These tentacles become locomotory organ for Hydra. It turns to one side, fixes its tentacle on the ground, goes upside down and tilts its body on the opposite direction to cover the distance and again becomes straight. That is how the hydra will move. So we can safely say that tentacles are the mode of locomotion in hydra. Coming to vertebrates, let us take example of bird. It is able to move of course with its two feet and it is able to fly with wings. So locomotory organ are for flying wings and for walking on ground hind feet. Coming to man, we walk on two legs, so our feet are locomotory organ. But other mammals like cow, cat or rat, they walk on four limbs. That means two fore limbs and two hind limbs. In that case, all the four limbs become locomotory organ. At this point, I must explain what I mean by movement and how it is related to locomotion. If I am moving my hand, this is movement. If I am moving my jaw, again it is movement. If I am moving my eyelid, that is also movement, but these are not locomotion. But when I am moving my leg to walk, or to run or to swim, then that becomes locomotion. That means movement is an important part of locomotion or movement and locomotion will go together. So locomotion will have movement, but not necessarily all kinds of movements will be locomotion. This is one thing which we should remember. The other point regarding movement and locomotion when we say locomotory organ, I say cilia in paramecium are locomotory organ, but cilia in paramecium may be performing some other action in the body also. That means the part of the body which is helping in locomotion may help in some other functions in the body also. So locomotory organ may be doing many other things sometimes in some animals. Keeping these two things in mind, we move forward to understand locomotion and movement. And before we move forward, I may like to show you this slide to show various animals with various mode of locomotory organs. 
In this slide, you can see amoeba and you can see pseudopodia. These are pseudopodia and with the help of these pseudopodia, the amoeba will move. So, we can say pseudopodia are locomotory organ in amoeba. Coming to paramecium, you can see cilia. These cilia will help in the movement. So, we can call it ciliary mode of locomotion. Next, in the slide, I am showing you euglena. Euglena is an the unicellular organism in which the locomotory organ is flagella. In this diagram, you can see flagella. And with the help of this flagella, the organism will move and we can say flagellate locomotory organ. This shows hydra, a multicellular organism and these are the tentacles. So, when it wants to move from one point to another, the, it will turn tentacles to the ground and stick to the ground and bring body upside down and then turn on the other side put the base and then become erect. So, it has moved from this point to this point. So, that is how hydra will move with the help of tentacles. So, in case of hydra, tentacles are the locomotory organ. At the same time, tentacles will also help in capturing the prey. Bird, the wings will help in flying and these hind feet will help in walking. Coming to man, we use our hind legs or hind limbs for walking. Similarly, in different animals, we have different modes of locomotory organ, but except in the case when animal is sessile, does not move, we have locomotory organ in all other organisms and they are important for any movement. Movement can be for various purposes like one can move for getting food or for finding the mate or to find the shelter or to escape from the enemy or for doing certain kinds of jobs. So, different kinds of movements will invite different kind of participation from different organs of the body and some movements will also result into locomotion. So, what is the difference between movement and locomotion now? Locomotion involves movement, definitely it involves movement. Any movement which results into change in position from one place to another is locomotion. When position of the body has changed from one space to another, that is locomotion. And if change in the space is not there, then it is only movement. Moving forward, let us see how many types of movements are there as far as locomotion is concerned. Of course, first is amoeboid. I did explain amoeboid movement by giving example of amoeba. Let me say that the way amoeba moves, that kind of movement wherever we see, we will call it amoeboid because it belongs to the type of the movement which amoeba has. So, amoeboid movement that means by giving out pseudopodia and moving forward. In our body, amoeba shows movement which we call amoeboid. Now, kind of movement which amoeba shows wherever we see in any other organism, in any other cell, we will call it amoeboid. So, here a type of movement will be called amoeboid. In our body, we have blood. In the blood, we have cell types. And one cell type is WBC, white blood cells, and in that one type is leukocytes. These leukocytes in our body show amoeboid movement. The way amoeba moves, the same way these leukocytes will move by way of producing pseudopodia. Pseudopodia means false foot. Pseudo means false, pod means foot. So, moving by false food because these are formed and they disappear, again formed, again disappear depending upon which way the cell wants to move. So, good example of amoeboid movement in our body is leukocyte. Coming to second type, the ciliary movement. I did give you example of paramecium. 
to explain you locomotory organ cilia or ciliary locomotion. But in our body also we have ciliary locomotion, ciliary movement. For example, in our trachea there are small cilia which help in preventing dust particles entering our respiratory system which may be present in the air which we are trying to inhale during respiration. Now those cilia will stop these dust particles and only very clean air will go inside. So these cilia we have in trachea. Similarly, cilia we have in our reproductive tract, especially the female reproductive tract. We know that ova is produced in ovary and then it is taken up by fallopian tube and fertilization will take place in fallopian tube and after zygote is formed, now this zygote will move from fallopian tube down oviduct down uterus where it will implant. All this movement will be taken care of by cilia which are present in female reproductive tract. So again we are seeing movement with the help of cilia and we can call it ciliary movement. Then another is muscular movement where muscles are involved. We have muscle in the body. We are going to discuss about muscles in detail little later. But wherever muscle is involved in the movement, we call it muscular movement. Maybe our jaw, the movement of jaw, movement of eyelid or movement of any other part of the body. So these are three major kinds of movements which are involved in locomotion. After understanding these details with this background, now we come to locomotion straight. The three systems which are closely interrelated as far as locomotion is concerned is the skeletal system, muscular system and nervous system. In locomotion, skeletal system is definitely involved because our bones give shape and particular structure to the particular organ in our body. Muscles because bones cannot move alone, so muscles should be attached to the bone to make it move. And of course nervous system, nervous system controls every other system in our body. So if muscle is connected to bone, that is the feature which is important for locomotion and that is called tendon. The attachment of muscle with bone is called tendon. Now we should try to understand the muscle. What features do we expect in muscle? First thing, it should have excitability. Whenever there is any stimulus, it should give the response. It should be able to contract, it should be able to relax and it should have elasticity. It should not be very tough like bone. Elasticity is a must feature for muscle. So we can say in short that muscle should have excitability, contractility, extensibility and elasticity. So in today's session we have understood about locomotion, movement, the difference between movement and locomotion, different locomotory organs in different kinds of organisms and involvement of skeletal system, muscular system and nervous system in locomotion and also special features of the muscle. With this, we come to the end of this session. Thank you. 